I found that photography was the way that I managed to rediscover who I was. What I started to do was use photography as a form of expression, almost as a form of a, a diary to myself, just about things that I enjoyed looking at, things that I enjoyed spending time with, and things that made me smile. The photographs were nothing of note. They weren't for other people's approval or validation. They weren't shared on social media. They were really personal. And through those photographs, I actually found out who I was, what I enjoyed photographing, and found myself in a calmer place, a better place, a happier place. And I've made that way of photographing my life now. My name is Paul Sanders, and this is how I've used photography to help with my mental well-being. Now, I've been a photographer since I left school. Um, I specialised at one point in news and sport and ended my career working as picture editor of the Times newspaper in London. Um, during my time there, I became quite ill with very poor mental health, the stress of the job and what was happening in my life uh, took its toll on me. And it led to me having a nervous breakdown and having to leave my, leave my job. And I come to London and to be honest, you know, I suffer with uh, anxiety. And when I come into London, my anxiety sort of runs away with me. Um, it's very related to coming into London to my previous job where, you know, where I suffered. And I use my photography to help me make the journey. I look at things to help me go from place to place. I enjoy the process of seeing different things in different locations that, that enable me sometimes to just put one foot in front of the other. I'd allowed my job at the Times to completely define who I was, so I'd lost sight of um, my own identity. And when I left, I started working in landscape photography, but very quickly became disillusioned with it because I was always comparing myself to other people, which just exaggerated my poor uh, mental health and the the sort of low self-esteem that, that I felt. I use a mindfulness approach to photography and that means not being sort of wedded to an outcome. It means not expecting to actually photograph anything. I literally go for a walk with my camera. The photography part of it is almost secondary to the experience of just being outdoors. And what I find is that by having this open-minded approach leads me to just explore places in a fresh way uh, without searching for previous photographs. But many people think that you need a lot of expensive equipment to be a photographer or to enjoy photography and the, the truth of the matter is actually you don't. I do a lot of my images on my smartphone, uh, a lot of the incidental pictures because at the time that's what I've got with me. But when I want to do something more considered, I use something like this Fujifilm GFX. Your camera should not get in the way of the experience. The camera should be part of the experience. It's almost the last thing that you should consider. Um, the, often the, the whole experience of photographing then becomes about the camera and it's the technical side of it. Cameras can be set up to work very, very simply. Uh, one of the reasons that I chose Fujifilm is because what you see in the, in the viewfinder is exactly what you get, so you know what your picture is going to look like before you even press the button. And that way, the, the, the equipment doesn't get in the way. The equipment is simple to use, therefore very accessible. It's technically non-threatening, which for somebody like me is actually quite a big deal because I'm not a technical photographer. I don't enjoy the technical side. Um, photography for me is all about the image, the moment, the experience. It's not about the camera. And as much as some people enjoy the technology, and there's nothing wrong with that, 
photography is about creating a memory of a place, creating a response and a memory that you can bring to life through a print or a journal. An entry level camera needn't cost you thousands of pounds. Apart from buying good second hand equipment, you can also buy uh, a fixed lens compact camera for just a couple of hundred pounds. And, and that will make the bridge between your phone and the, the next level, giving you a little bit more control over your images. As you advance, you might consider an interchangeable lens camera, something where you might buy a, a zoom lens to attach it, or a macro lens if you like close-ups. The Fujifilm range covers all of, these, uh, all of these eventualities, from the very first camera you might want to buy to something that you can produce top-line exhibition prints from. I find that a photograph hasn't completed its natural journey until it's printed. Uh, I personally think we don't print enough photographs. We're, we're quite happy to, to take the pictures and store the pictures and look at the pictures and share them on digital platforms, but we shy away from printing. When you print a photograph, you, you come all the way back to a tangible experience. You can touch the paper and feel it in your hands feel the weight of it. You spend a lot longer looking at a print. You look into the subtleties of the tone and the lines and the composition. When you, you hold a print, you're more likely to spend two or three minutes looking at it, as opposed to a couple of seconds that you would do on a social media platform. And it's not about whether you instantly like or dislike. Looking at a print evokes an emotion in you. It brings up a feeling. It asks you a question. And printing doesn't have to be expensive. You know, you, you can buy um, a very small home printer that'll print kind of A4 sort of size for, for less than a hundred pounds, um, probably even cheaper than that. Paper doesn't have to be expensive. You can, of course, get them printed at your, at your local pharmacy or high street shop or at a, a, an online platform and they'll deliver them to your house printed. But one of the joys of printing is printing your own work at home. It doesn't matter on what sort of printer. Just being able to watch it come out of, the, uh, out of the printer and knowing that you have seen the image, you have frozen the moment, and then you brought the image back to life by printing it out. And then you can put it on your wall or put it into a book or drop it into your journal. And it's the only sure way of archiving your work. You know, a print can last hundreds of years. A digital hard drive can be dropped, can get wet, can fill with moisture, formats can change, but a print will always be there. One of the things that people get really hung up about with photography is the, the level of knowledge that they need to operate a camera. Cameras these days are designed to be really simple to use and the camera has to be invisible to you. Photography is not about the camera that you use. It's not about the, the tripod or the lenses or the bag. Photography is about your connection with the subject. When I photograph things, I may have the camera on a tripod, but I'll often just step back and it'll be about me and the subject, me and the view, me and whatever I'm working with. The camera is just there to record what I'm working on. It's not the be all and end all of the image. It's just there to store it until I get home, uh, until I decide what I'm gonna do with it. The, the key is to be able to translate what you see into what the camera sees. So I used to print out all of these little photographs and I would put them in my, in my journal just with a few notes about what I felt, what I saw, what I experienced. And gradually over a period of time, this appreciation for the, the ordinary being so beautiful started to help me see in a different way when I, uh, when I would go out 
to photograph the landscape or different subjects um, in a more considered way, shall we, shall we say. Um, it's, a, it's a slow, it can be a slow process. Um, some people are unfamiliar with writing about their photography, but not being constricted by the, the rules of photography and judging things by what is good or what is bad actually frees you up. Um, it gives you an open approach to any subject, whether that is flowers, whether it's people, whether it's reflections or colours or landscape or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that catches your eye is a worthy subject. Part of the big problem with photography, in my opinion, is the competitive nature of it. And it generally makes people feel not good enough. You know, we enter competitions and we don't win. We perhaps belong to a club where one or two people win competitions. We don't see our work in magazines or our work doesn't get much traction on social media. It doesn't really matter if anybody else likes the photographs that you produce. It's all about whether they work for you. And that is quite a hard mindset to, to work with, especially if you're suffering with poor self-esteem and perhaps you don't get very many likes. But what you have to be able to do is say, is this the best picture that I could take on this day at this time? And if the answer is yes, then that's the best picture that's available and nobody can better that. Whether anybody else sees the beauty that you see in your work doesn't make any difference. If it works for you, if it resonates with you, if it reflects how you felt about yourself and the place or the subject you were photographing, then it's good enough. People often say that you shouldn't photograph on bright sunny days, that the beginning and the end of the days when the, the light is at a lower angle, when the sun is at a lower angle, is the nicest part of the day to photograph. I personally don't, don't believe that. I believe that there is only light. There's no such thing as good light or bad light. It's what you're given and how you choose to embrace it, to accept it and respond to it. On a really bright day like today, we've, we've got really strong contrast, we've got deep shadows, we've got bright highlights. You can get some astounding pictures just using that contrast. What I, what I tend to do on days like this is I'll use a neutral density filter. So I use these leaf filters and a neutral density graduated filter has a dark bit at the top and a light bit at the bottom. And generally, generally speaking, the dark bit goes over the sky to darken the sky down and leave your buildings and or mountains or lakes or whatever you're photographing with the normal exposure. And, and that enables you to control the contrast. I like to try and get my images as close to right in camera. And that means I spend less time behind the computer worrying about the technical side. For me, the, the, that side of it is, is not a part I enjoy. It, again, it goes back to my previous existence in an office. And I like to be, I like to be photographing. I like to be behind the camera. Another thing that I do on a, a very bright day is I use a solid neutral density filter, like this one. And when this, the sun is really, really bright, sometimes the camera can't cope with the exposure. So by using a solid neutral density, it just enables me to get the exposure in the camera that, um, that I really want. Um, and, and that enables me to isolate objects. It also means that because it generally gives you a slightly slower shutter speed, it also means that I can uh, make people blur, make the trees appear to have movement in. And those effects that um, are generated are, are really wonderful because they bring your pictures to life a little bit. I use the leaf filter system because it saves me investing in different size filters for every lens. I like to use one filter and then have a different adapter ring that fits on each lens and then you just slide the filters in and out of the um, of the holder really really simply and that just clips on and off the front of the camera um, it's whoop, <laughs> it's one of the most important pieces of kit that i um, that i have um, being able to see what you get in the camera 
and being able to create the look and feel that you want in the camera for me is really important because it means that I am so connected with what I'm photographing. It means that I can pre-visualize what the image will look like as a print and whether it's conveying what I am experiencing at the time. So I always have one of my journals with me. Um, some of them are poetry based, so I write down little things that just come, come to me, little inspirations. I never, I'm not much of a poet or much of a writer. Um, this one here is much more based on um, my photography. So it's got experiences of, of what I've had and then some little Instax prints of the thing cards or messages that I might have found and enjoyed. Some of it's a lot of writing and um, other bits oops, are just things like these sweet wrappers that I picked up that I really liked. Um, you know, it's, it's just a, a visual reminder of, of what, I was, what I was enjoying, what I was feeling, what I was thinking. And Although I might not print every single image that I take on, a, on a, a bigger sheet of paper, I print most of them out and put them in here, either on the little Instax or just with, um, uh, just with some normal, um, normal printing paper. Um, and it, it's somehow a lot less, a lot less disposable than um, social media. It's much nicer to be able to pick it up and, and read um, the thing. So here's one from the other day, and it says, "There's nothing quite like bird song in the morning, where the plane above is going, seeing a child smile." And they're all things that I, I, I've experienced, and it's really lovely to just sit and read back, because so often we forget the experience, and we just think about whether the photograph is good enough. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether the photograph is is a great picture, whether it's going to stand the test of time. You know, what I have here are, they're pictures of tree bark. You know, I mean, do they mean anything? I don't know. But that coupled with the, you know, the experience, um, it's, it's fabulous to be able to just flick back and, and see things that, um, you know, remind me of, of happy times. Mindful photography or contemplative photography, as it's more widely known, is actually really accessible. It's really quite simple because there's no judgment, there's no competition. And an easy place to start is just by setting yourself a, a little challenge. Choose perhaps a, a simple colour and just photograph that colour wherever you go. If you see examples of that colour, just spend time with it. Another really easy approach is to sit somewhere and just write down before you start photographing what you feel, what you hear, what you see in terms of the colours, the sound, the textures and then start looking for those things and photographing those. The photographs that you take might not be beautiful landscapes but it's a, it's a learning curve, it's a practice and by doing these little simple exercises the the overall sight starts to come to you, the, the awareness starts to develop and, and gradually you find a lot of calm and peace through your photography. It started for me when my mental health was at a really low ebb um, and I honestly thought I was, I was at, at the end. I'd come to a point where I felt utterly, utterly worthless. Um, my depression was, was crippling. I barely went out of the house at times. And I would photograph flowers in my house um, after sitting just staring at them for ages and ages. And I started to recognise in them similar moods to how I felt. Uh, you know, perhaps anxiety, perhaps tiredness, perhaps exhaustion. Um, and then with the help of my counsellor at the time, we were able to identify that in my photography, I was actually expressing how I truly felt about myself 
And in the landscape photographs that I took, it was photographs that were generally depicting calm, because for me, my life wasn't calm. Inside my head there were contradictive, contradictive stories, voices telling me I wasn't good enough. But in my photography, there was a sense of peace, a serenity. And they were, they were little meditations. And I found that although I, found, although I was struggling to talk about how I felt to anybody, I could show how I felt and then use the photographs as a vehicle to enable me to talk to my therapist. So the photography became twofold. It became a meditation in the process of photographing, but it also became a vehicle to letting me express how I felt and getting the help I needed. I have a responsive approach to photography. I don't plan the locations. I literally just go for a walk with my camera. Rather than Googling or researching heavily into what other people have photographed at a certain place, I like to turn up with an open mind and just go for a walk, just wander, and just look at what's around me and engage all of my senses in what is happening, uh, you know, what, what smells are on the air, what can I taste in the wind, what can I feel against my skin, how does the earth feel under my feet, what can I hear? All of those things come together to, to make the experience into a final photograph. I find the whole process incredibly calming. And rather than going looking for a specific picture, if you allow yourself an open approach, you start to find things that really resonate with you. You start to see things that pique your curiosity or just things that you lose yourself in. The longer that you sit with a subject, the more you start to see in it and the more of yourself starts to come through. It's a little bit like a conversation between you and the landscape or you and whichever subject you've chosen. So we've, um, we've found a nice spot. We've, uh, we've been walking for a little while. We spent a good portion of the day sort of walking along the South Downs, which is really beautiful. And um, I just became really intrigued by this lovely fence that leads down, the, down this hill uh, towards the cliff line. And it's, it's not traditionally beautiful, but it just appeals to me. Um, so I'm gonna have a, a little look, spend some time with it, and see if we can make a photograph that sort of represents sort of this little area. Um, it really is quite beautiful. It's lovely and quiet. Um, so we can take our time. And, and just put the toys together and, uh, and see what happens. So I'm going to use a, a wide angle lens here because I want to get the fence to look a little bit like it's sort of disappearing off into the, the distance. And a wide angle lens um, does sort of bend the truth a little bit, shall we say, which is, uh, which is sometimes nice. So you just get a little bit more, uh, more in the shot. And then I'm putting on a, a filter holder um, and that's so that I can uh, uh, apply some of the graduated filters that I use that just control the contrast and allow me to create the look of the image I want in the camera rather than sitting at home and doing it on the computer. I much prefer to get what I want in camera. It saves less time on the computer at home and I'm not really a computer person. Um, so I use these filters by, uh, by Lee and they're absolutely wonderful. Amazingly, they're made in the UK, still handmade. Um, so I should just put that in. And I like to get my camera sort of about 85% of the way set up before I even put it on the tripod because in my, in my head I've got an idea of the sort of image I want to make and I know roughly what I'm going to be doing and, and experience is sort of taught me a lot about the, the use of filters and, and lenses so I, a lot of it comes almost subconsciously uh, and I'm very lucky um, for that. For some people it doesn't come so easily so you might have to experiment a little bit more with lens choice. So the, uh, the composition is actually working out really quite nicely. Um, it's quite simple. We've just got the, the lovely line of this fence going down the valley 
and then the line of the cliff sort of sweeping up and there's another fence down at the bottom that's just catching the late afternoon light. Uh, there's some lovely little twinkly lights on the, on the sea. But for me, it's so peaceful. We've been here so long, I feel so calm and quite relaxed. Um, and there's sort of a, a simple elegance to the fence. It, you know, it's not classically beautiful, but I love the way the footpath winds its way off up the hill. Uh, but you've got that lovely sharp edge of the cliff against the very, very kind of pale sky. Um, and it's just, it's just sort of falling together really nicely. I'm actually quite enjoying just being here because all I can hear are the, the birds and the waves and I can smell the sea. Um, you know, there's a little bit of warmth in the air, although it's a bit cooler than it was earlier. And just that gentle chill is just starting to just kick in. And the whole experience is getting calmer and calmer and calmer. Um, and it's, it's making me feel really, really alive, really in the moment. Um, and this is one of many things that I've noticed today that I've really enjoyed photographing. And that's the key, that you enjoy photographing. It doesn't matter to me whether this photograph wins a competition, gets a like on Facebook or Instagram, all that is, is completely meaningless. What's important is how I'm feeling and how far removed I feel from the noise of the everyday, how quiet my, my body and mind are feeling. Um, I can actually feel my body's relaxed. I'm not holding any tension in my body at all, which is, which is unusual because I'm normally filled with quite a lot of anxiety. But when I, when I photograph like this, my whole body relaxes, my mind relaxes, it becomes a lot quieter. And normally, obviously, I'm not talking to you guys, so I'm totally alone, um, you know, but it is nice to have your company. I'm just gonna go back to photographing this, uh, this little fence and uh, we'll see what it looks like. not a settings person. Um, I look at the screen and if it looks right on the screen and then I'll look at the settings and see what they are. Um, for me the, the whole technical side of photography just gets in the way so I like to look at the picture, feel it, see if it works and then I'll look at the settings and if I need to make adjustments I can fine-tune things then but if it looks right on the screen of this, uh, of this Fujifilm camera then it is right and I don't, I don't need to worry. So I've set my focus about a, a third of the way into the fence and uh, I'm using a shutter speed at the moment of a fifteenth of a second at an aperture of 14. 14 will give me some nice depth on this lens which is a 23mm wide angle lens like I said earlier and we're getting all the way up to the top of the cliff and uh, there are just some people moving up the cliff. So because I'm not using um, a remote release, I'm just going to put the self timer on and just put it on to two seconds. And that means that as I press the button, take my hands off the camera, the camera will photograph without any wobble, hopefully. It's not windy today, so there's no need for extra shelter. I'll do a quick review of the picture and just have a look. I quite like that. It's simple. It feels like today. And that's all that matters to me is that it feels like the moment that I am experiencing. And if it feels like that, then it's good enough. It doesn't matter if it wins awards. It doesn't matter if anybody buys it or if anybody likes it. As long as I like it and it, it represents how I feel in the moment that I release the shutter. I noticed there were quite a few people walking up and down the uh, up and down the footpath that leads through the frame. I'm not a big fan of people. I don't like people in my pictures at all. I'm probably the most antisocial photography I'll ever meet. So to get rid of them, I'm going to use a 10-stop filter, um, and all that will do is increase the uh, the shutter speed, the exposure time. Um, so I'm just going to put that in the slot closest to the lens. I've already focused, and my focus is now turned off. So that goes in the the back slot. The Liebig stopper is a really great filter. I mean, it's, it's 
glass, it's nice and solid. It, mine doesn't, mine touch wood hasn't broken yet. Um, and what that will do, it extends the, the shutter speed from a 15th of a second to a minute. Um, so now I'm gonna just release the, uh, release the shutter. And what that will do is over the course of the minute, the people are walking up and down the hill won't record in the frame. They'll just, uh, they'll just be blurred uh, because they won't be in the same place, unless of course they stand still, which hopefully, hopefully they won't. Even the man with the dog, hopefully he won't. Um, and that will get rid of them. The reason I do it that way rather than in Photoshop afterwards is because I don't want to spend time retouching my pictures. Um, I enjoy the outdoors element of photography. Um, I enjoy being in the fresh air. I used to spend around 14 to 16 hours a day behind a computer when I was working at the Times and I don't need to do it anymore. I, I've done that. So if I can make my pictures as close to right in the camera, it means that I spend more time photographing and less time behind the computer. And commu computers for me just generate noise um, and it, does, it doesn't feel real, it doesn't feel like time well spent. This feels like time well spent. Oh, it's finished. Let's have a quick look at that. Some final thoughts to, to leave you with. Photography for me has been a therapy. It's, it's helped me recover from a really poor period of mental health. I've learned within that time to, to express what I am feeling and not worry about what other people feel or think about my images. Um, and some people say, oh, that's very arrogant or it takes a lot of confidence. Actually, it doesn't because I probably criticize my own work much more. I sit in judgment on myself a lot. But by photographing things that I enjoy, takes away the judgment because I'm not thinking about whether they're good or bad. I'm thinking about whether I enjoyed it. And generally, I only photograph things I enjoy, so they're all largely positive experiences. Photographs can be, can be shared, and that can lead into a conversation which, if you're having um, help from a professional with, with any mental health issues, you can show your photograph and talk about how you felt and that can open up a way of healing. If you're, you know, if you tend to be a little bit of a loner, photographic clubs can, can encourage you to give you a reason to get out, to, to meet like-minded people, to share your interest. They can also give you confidence in your work when it's displayed or exhibited. Um, or shared with people and the, these great things all come from behind a camera and because the cameras don't actually lie what's there is there it's how you how you leave things out is how you construct the picture to talk about what you're feeling and and often people get sidetracked by how am I going to make the story in the picture rather than just allowing the picture to come to them rather than seeing something and engaging with it. Whether I'm in the, in the heart of a city, um, halfway up a mountain or by the coast, all the photographs that I make are pictures that I see, that sort of come to me, they're presented to me, because I, I arrive in places with an open mind. I don't discount any subject as not being worthy of being photographed. Everything, is beautiful in its own unique way. Everything. Everything is worthy of being photographed. And because of that, because of that acceptance of the unique beauty of everything, I can accept that I'm enough because I have lots of things that aren't quite right with me, but actually they make me me, they make me unique, they separate me from you. Your so-called flaws separate you from the next person. The way I see is unique to me. The way you see is unique to you. Neither of us are right, neither of us are wrong. And using that as a starting point is such a powerful way to go forward in your photography. 
because you don't have to please anybody other than yourself. Photography for most people is a hobby. That's an investment in your quality time. That's your quality time. That's not your time pleasing other people. It's your time pleasing yourself. So whether you want to photograph flowers in your kitchen, cityscapes, landscapes, seascapes, you know, whatever, see it your way. Be inspired by other people. But don't be led by the nose to photograph in a certain way because people think it's acceptable or it conforms to things that don't fill your soul with joy. Allow each photograph you, you take to touch you. Feel the emotions, or be aware of the emotions that you experience when you, when you come across a photograph that you want, to, you, know, you want to record. Enjoy it, that's the most important thing, is enjoy your photography and enjoy it for you. And remember that how you see is unique to you. Nobody sees the way you do.